Gilbert, and good day, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you for taking the time to allow me to introduce you to Lasada Therapeutics. But Lasada is a listed company, as Gilbert said. We're on the NASDAQ, and uh, since we are listed, I will remind you that I'll be making forward-looking statements throughout the presentation, and you should keep those in mind as you take any investment decisions. So let me start with a company overview. What is Lasada? Well, Lasada is a clinical stage therapeutics development company that's an advancing a novel tumor targeting and penetration technology that is an adjuvant used to improve the efficacy of other anti-cancer drugs. Our company is managed by a group of seasoned executives with many, many years of successful drug development experience and expertise internationally in this field, as well as in other therapeutic areas. We have field-leading technology in a severely underserved global indication. Uh, multiple product and business milestones are projected over the next 24 months, which are important for value creation, as investors would know. And we have a platform that's already been validated by the existence of existing partnerships, and we have the potential to create many more. But I think one of the key attributes of the company that's important in this difficult financial environment is that we actually have projected cash runway into 2026, and all of our development programs are funded through to data, which is very important. So really, you could have an opportunity to get a, a very good value by buying today with all of the upside in front of you as the programs continue through development. So our therapeutic focus is oncology, but specifically in solid tumors, which account for more than 90% of the newly reported cases of cancer. And these solid tumor cancers include all the terrible diseases that I'm sure the audience has familiarity with, like lung, breast, pancreas, liver, et cetera. Um, these, these tumors are very difficult to treat because the penetration of these tumors and the targeting of these tumors present distinct challenges. They are encapsulated by a barrier of cells called the tumor stroma, which acts as a physical obstacle, limiting the penetration and distribution of the anti-cancer agents into the tumor. There's also a tumor microenvironment, that is the environment immediately adjacent to the stroma and the tumor itself, where immunosuppressive cells contribute to tumor resistance and or metastases. And this is not simply overcome by prolonged or escalated dosing, of non-targeted anti-cancer agents because that leads to intolerable off-target side effects. And also in this area of solid tumors, translation of animal model results to human safety and efficacy has been really inconsistent and challenging. As I think you all know, you know, science has cured cancer in mice hundreds of times, but that has not yet translated to humans. Now, there are targeted penetration technologies to enhance drug delivery to solid tumors, and RGD peptides, for example, are a good example of those targeting agents, but they do not enhance penetration of the delivery of therapeutic agents. Internalizing RGDs, however, combine targeting and penetration enhancement. And our lead program, LISTA-1, or sertepatide, is an internalizing RGD peptide that exploits the C end rule active transport mechanism to target solid tumors and enhance tumor penetration by co administered or covalently bound drugs. And this product, LISTA 1, is currently in clinical development as a tumor targeting and penetration enhancer and adjuvant to be used with other anti cancer agents. And it works by converting the tumor stroma from a barrier to a conduit which now allows for those co-administered drugs to actually have optimized effect. It's important to note that LISTA-1 can be combined with any type of anti-cancer therapy, from immunotherapy to chemotherapy, to radiotherapy, and even antisense or RNA-based drugs. And by taking the approach of going with co-administration, that streamlines the development path to registration by minimizing the regulatory complexities that would be associated with a new chemical entity, which would be the case if we actually chemically bound LISTA-1 to an anti-cancer agent. Very importantly, you should note that LISTA-1 
also combats resistance and metastases. We have data that shows in these highly fibrotic tumors, LISTA1 selectively depletes the immunosuppressive T cells, means it takes uh, cold tumors and makes them hot or uh, immunogenic, and it inhibits the metastatic cascade. So we are pursuing a two-pillar approach to development of LISTA1. On the one hand, a rapid global registration program is underway to get to a registration in pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. And this is in combination with one of the standards of care in this area, gemcitabine and nabpaclitaxel. And in this case, we have a phase 2B program that is going to be uh, announced as being completely enrolled in the in the very short future. So almost completely enrolled phase 2B. So very advanced in development. And I'll talk about some data from that program shortly. We also in parallel are developing list of one in combination with a variety of other standard of care regimens in a variety of other solid tumor cancers to demonstrate the broad applicability of our compound. And for that, we have multiple phase one B, 2A proof of concept studies underway. As I mentioned, we also have a number of partnerships in existence, R&D type partnerships with foundations and clinical research groups, as well as other pharmaceutical companies around the world. And very importantly, a strategic partnership with Chilu Pharmaceutical in China, which uh, has licensed the rights to list the one for Greater China from Lasata. We work under a co-development joint steering committee as Chilu assumes all the development and commercialization responsibilities and costs in the licensed territories. And uh, we've already collected some significant milestones from that deal and have a number of other development, regulatory, and then ultimately uh, commercial milestones that would be available to us upon approval of the product in China. And because of the broad applicability, we can mix and match list of one with a variety of anti-cancer agents. The possibility for additional partnerships is actually limitless. So let me explain how this works. List of one is a nine amino acid cyclic peptide, which has a strong affinity to bind with alpha V, beta three, beta five integrins, which are found on the tumor cells and on the tumor endothelial cells in the stroma. And once LISTA1 is bound there, it's susceptible to protease cleavage, that is proteolytic enzymes, snip the cyclic peptide into two linear fragments. And one of those fragments is the c end rule or SENDAR peptide fragment, which has a very strong binding affinity and selectivity for an adjacent receptor called neuropillin-1. And once neuropillin-1 is activated, the c end rule or SENDAR transport pathway is initiated. And this is manifested by the formation of small vesicles at the surface of the cells, which encapsulate anything in the circulation system, such as anti-cancer drugs, and percolates them through the tumor stroma, and deposit them deep into the tumor, allowing them to have greater access to their particular targets. Also, when the SENDAR pathway is activated, the gap junctions between the stromal cells is, uh, is opened, and that allows for greater extravasation of immune cells into the, the tumor, allowing your innate immune system to contribute to tumor uh, effectiveness. So now we have a number of preclinical pieces of information here that demonstrate in this slide how highly selective the concentration of LISTA1 is for pancreatic tumors in this particular model, and a number and a sampling of peer-reviewed journals that demonstrates the broad applicability. But I think what's most important is the clinical results that have coming. And you're seeing here the results of our phase one proof of concept study done in 31 patients in Australia at three different sites, which demonstrated that LISTA1 was extremely well tolerated, that there was no dose limiting toxicity, and in fact, that the safety profile of LISTA1 combined with these chemotherapeutic agents was no different than the safety profile of the chemotherapeutic agents alone. But what's really, I think, compelling is the improvement in efficacy parameters that you see here on the slide and is more easily seen in these different bar graphs. Overall survival for these very sick patients was improved by more than 50%, and 
progression-free survival by more than 75%. And in the words of the principal investigator here, this is unheard of positive results. And also what's critical is that all of the other endpoints in the trial were consistent in demonstrating a positive improvement when the combination of LISTA-1 was studied versus the standard of care alone. So that gave us great excitement and it's allowed us now to move into these very detailed development programs. For LISTA-1, we already have fast track designation for PDAC in the United States and orphan drug designation in Europe and the United States for PDAC, pancreatic cancer, as well as for glioblastoma. And you can see from the slide here, there are a number of very important aspects or benefits that come with these designations, which include more rapid reviews, but most uh, extended exclusivity, et cetera. But importantly, we are eligible for accelerated approval under these programs. And if our phase two BRI program is successful, we will be exploring the uh, opportunity to make accelerated approval applications around the world. So the next several slides demonstrate a listing of all the ongoing trials. You can see many of them are enrolling. A few others will be initiating within the, the, the ensuing couple of months. But the ASCEND trial, the one here at the top of the list, is probably the one that should be of greatest interest to investors because this is the phase 2B trial, blinded, randomized, uh, and, and, um, and, and controlled and a trial with 155 patients powered to show a difference with standard of care alone. And this trial now is almost fully enrolled and we will have data from this trial, which will be seminal to the program in about a year from now. Uh, again, a number of the other trials that are ongoing. And the next two slides lay out the development milestones that are associated with each of these trials, including uh, enrollment completion, uh, the initiation of, of data reporting, and what's not shown here are some of the business development milestones, which could also overlay on this. So you see quite a lot of news flow during the course of 2024 and into 2025. Our company is very well financed. We have about $55 million reported on our balance sheet as of the end of the third quarter. We have no debt and a very clean uh, capital structure. This gives us cash well into 2026, the first quarter at least, and probably beyond, and with the opportunity, as I said, to have a seminal data next year at around this time, more than 15 months before we would be uh, approaching our cash out date. So we believe that there's a very strong uh, case for investment in Lasada today, a strong management team, uh, leading technology that's protected with uh, with appropriate intellectual property portfolio and the orphan designation exclusivities, milestones that are well projected over the course of the next 24 months, all of which should lead to increases of value and ultimately uh, perhaps even the application for an accelerated approval as early as 2025 with enough cash and no debt to be able to execute our plan. But of course, we're always looking for new investors who are interested in supporting our company. We have many other programs that we would like to advance. And of course, for some of the existing programs, we could potentially go even faster if we had some additional capital. We do think that we represent a very good value in today's market with strong financial and strong scientific rationale backing that. And so with that, I will uh, stop. Thank you for your attention. And now we have about five minutes to answer a few questions. Sure, uh, Dr. Masso. There's a few ones that we collected uh, ahead of time. The first one from the investor who was asking about, are you, is, he saw that you have uh, strategic partnerships in markets like Australia and China. Are you currently looking for any more strategic partnerships in markets like, like Europe at all? Yes, we're looking for strategic partnerships in the United States and in Europe, and in fact, all markets of the world. I mean, the, the Chinese partnership was critical to us, not only from a financial perspective, but also because there are very uh, specialized uh, regulations about developing a product in China that often require you to have a manufacturing of the product localized and to have uh, you know native speakers etc so it made a lot of sense for us to to initiate with a partnership there 
in the other countries of the world where English is a, a principal language, such as North America especially, we can carry through the development ourselves further on, but we're always in discussion. And I do believe that many of the large and uh, large pharma and large biotech companies are waiting to see the data from the Ascend trial at this time next year. If that data is positive, I believe there's a very strong possibility that we'll see a flurry of activity in the United States and European markets. And another question from uh, an investor is asked, can you check about your stock price? Is it uh, that you declined uh, since uh, mid-year? Any, any particular reasons why? I think the market has declined. If you look at the XBI in the United States, it's down more than 30 to 35 percent since the beginning of the year. We've tracked pretty closely uh, to, to the index. Part of the, the problem, of course, is that um, we're not out raising money at the moment. And so, uh, you know, when you're not raising money, nobody's paying attention to you. And uh, and so that's that's a little bit. But there, the fundamentals of our company have never been stronger. As I said, our, you know, we, we have strong data. We have ongoing programs. We have news flow and we have funding. So uh, I think, you know, from a fundamentals, we're a very strong position and the market will probably begin to pay closer attention as we get closer to announcing data in the various portions of 2024. And you have um, multiple milestones within the next 24 months, as we can see. Which one do you think is the most important to, in terms of adding the, the enterprise yeah. value for, for the startup? I think they will all be uh, additive to enterprise value, but the one that I believe will be uh, fundamental to the future of the company is the phase two A, phase two B data from Ascend, which is due in the fourth quarter of next year. That's the phase two B data which, as I said, if it's positive, it opens the door for the possibility of accelerated approval applications and, and also the possibility of a cascade of different partnerships. And one final question is asking about who, who are your current uh, major shareholders for the company? So we have a number of major shareholders, including some, some funds here in the United States, as well as outside of the United States, principally from Japan and, and China. We also have uh, several high net worth individuals and family offices, including uh, one of our largest shareholders is a high net worth individual in, in Beijing. Great. Uh, fun final question for you. You mentioned about Japan. Have you looked into the Japan's market for, for uh, partnerships? We, we have. We continue to talk to Japan. The, the problem with Japan is that from a regulatory perspective, you need to start um, your your work in development completely from the beginning when you enter into Japan for, for these types of products, which means we would have to start again with phase one. And certainly we don't want to take a step backwards at this stage. So we'll look for the positive phase two data and then find a Japanese partner who's willing to, to, to play catch up in that market for us. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Master, for giving us a great update and your story here. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate your interest, and I hope that some of you will become shareholders in Lasada. Have a great day.